Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2023 Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet. Now before we even get started here, I do want to mention one of the big reasons I haven't reviewed this yet was the price point when it's not on sale. This is coming in at $139.99, but around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this is the best $80 tablet on the market hands down. You can pick it up in purple, black, or blue from Amazon, Target, or Best Buy. I'll leave links in the description. And at that price point, this is definitely a tablet that I can recommend. Of course, there are a lot of people out there who really don't like the Amazon Fire interface, including myself, but this can be easily fixed by installing a third-party launcher app, and we can also install Google Play pretty easily using something called Fire Toolbox. Couple clicks, you'll have Google Play installed here, and with it set up like that, it's totally worth $80. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at these specs. I'm going to run some benchmarks. We'll test out some video playback, some gaming, and emulation on this device. But basically what we have here is a 10.1 inch tablet with an IPS display. It's running Fire OS 8, which is based on Android 11. And we've actually got some really good battery life with this tablet the way it is. They have left the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and it does use USB Type-C for charging and syncing. This will fast charge at 15 watts, which, you know, in all actuality isn't that fast, but it's perfect for a tablet like this given the low price point. Micro SD card support up to one terabyte, and we do have dual stereo speakers that support Dolby Atmos. Not the best sounding tablet in the world, but again, looking at that price, it's pretty decent for what you're getting here. When it comes to the overall specs here, for the CPU, we've got the MediaTek MT8186A. It's an ARM SOC. We have eight cores here, two Cortex-A76 cores running at 2.05 gigahertz, and six Cortex-A55 cores running at two gigahertz. They've also upgraded the GPU here. We've got the Mali G52MC22EE at one gigahertz. We only get three gigabytes of RAM, and you can actually pick this up with either 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Both of those only have three gigs. Now, if you wanted to go up to four gigs, you would have to go with their Fire 11 tablet which in my opinion is the best tablet they've ever made, but the price is much higher than this one here. It does have AC Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that five gigahertz network. Unfortunately, it's not Wi-Fi six in this version. Bluetooth 5.3, a 10.1 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and 224 pixels per inch, dual stereo speakers that support Dolby Atmos, up to 13 hours of battery life, and that's with the screen brightness kind of down, for me, at 100%, I've actually been getting around 11 hours, which really isn't that bad. You can get a full charge in 4 hours with the included 15 watt fast charger, and this is running Fire OS 8, which is based on Android 11. Now with a tablet like this, it's really hard to compare to something like an iPad, even the lower end version of the iPad, or Samsung's Galaxy Tab series due to what kind of performance those put out versus this, but those are much more expensive. Remember, when this is on sale, it's $80. Amazon's Fire OS for tablets UI hasn't changed much at all in the last few years. I'm really hoping for a nice refresh. And when you get this, you will not have Google Play installed. Remember, you can use something called Fire Toolbox. I've actually done a couple videos on it. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. Works on this brand new model here. You will have to rely on either side loading apps or the Amazon App Store. Now, if you're looking to pick this up just for video playback, Amazon App Store is great. There's also some games over there. But you're not going to get that full Google Play experience without installing Google Play on this. And once we have that installed, it definitely opens it up. We don't have to sideload any of those games we can get from Google Play. And we also get Google services, which comes in really handy for games that need it. Like for instance, Call of Duty Mobile, which actually runs pretty decently on this tablet. We just can't get it from the Amazon App Store. And sideloading it will not allow you to play without Play services installed. So doing this is kind of a must if you want to get into games like that. Now, first and foremost, Amazon creates these tablets as kind of media playback devices. Also, have some ebooks that you can read on here just fine. But uh, when it comes down to it, really made for kind of consuming media on the go. Netflix, Hulu, HBO, you can download all of that stuff from the Amazon App Store and have a really good time with it if that's what you're trying to do with the tablet. But again, you know, having Google Play really does open it up. Now, the first thing I wanted to show off was some video playback here. And it does it very, very well. We're going to head over to YouTube real quick. And we'll just uh, start up a demo video. Now, we've only got a 1200p display here. So really, going up to 1080p is where it's at. And with everything that I've tested so far, yeah, we can access 1080p 60. 
Also got stats for nerds listed somewhere here, but we'll make sure we're at 1080p, 60. And stats for nerds, so we can see if we're dropping any frames. It's here somewhere. Oh, they changed it up. There it is. Okay, so now we've got that on screen. Just go ahead and let this play through. And throughout all of the videos that I've tested so far, zero drop frames. I mean, we've got more than enough power for 1080p 60 playback on this device. I've also gone through, tested some Disney Plus and Prime Video out. Not a problem loading up your favorite shows over there. And of course, you can access Netflix, HBO. All of your favorite streaming apps will be available for this device. And when it comes to DRM, this does use Widevine Level 1, so we can get HD content in all of those. We're not going to be stuck with standard definition. So when it comes to using this as a media consumption device, not bad at all. And it also supports Bluetooth controllers. So I've just got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. You could also go with their Amazon Luna controller if you wanted to. But now I want to test out some native Android games. And unfortunately, this thing just isn't powerful enough to run something like Engine Impact at a respectable frame rate. But there are a lot of games that are fully playable. First up, we've got Minecraft. And from the settings, I haven't changed anything at all. I think we're at around 12 chunks. Fancy graphics is on. And every once in a while, I do notice a little bit of a hiccup here and there. But I think that's uh, everything loading up in the background. Now, one game that actually gave me a few issues here was Stardew Valley. I was actually surprised. It's definitely not running at full speed. Not sure what this is about because, I mean, with the CPU they opted to use here in the new 2023 Amazon Fire HD 10, it does have more than enough power to play these indie games. So uh, with this, I'm just not sure what's going on. I also tested Dead Cells. That was one that ran pretty well on here. But I'd say the highest end game that I went for was uh, Call of Duty Mobile. Still using that Xbox controller and we are at low settings. I didn't even go into the settings to jack it up. We could probably run this at medium settings, but personally, I still think it looks really good here, and it's very, very smooth at low settings. So this is one of those games that, yeah, if you did sideload Google Play, you could get this up and running no problem at all. But one of the main things I'm always interested in with these Fire tablets is emulation, just kind of a cheap way to get into some retro gaming on the go. And here we have Dreamcast. I'm using the ReDream emulator. Flycast would also work just as well, whether you want to go standalone or use Retro Arch. But with Redream, I am at 1280 by 960, so I've got a little bit of upscale here, and it plays through just fine. I mean, I had a really good time with a lot of these games that I tested out. And seeing how well this is running, I mean, when it comes to the lower end stuff, GBA, Game Boy, NES, SNES, uh, PC Engine, you want to go with some older arcade stuff, you're going to have a great time with it. So I really didn't even throw any of that into this video, but the next thing I tested was N64. I'm using the standalone version of Moopin 64 Plus. We've got 007 Goldeneye here, running really well, much better than the last Fire 10 they released. On that one, it was a little bit of a choppy mess, but with this upgraded GPU and CPU, we've got some full speed N64 emulation, and it runs great. Next thing I wanted to throw at it was some PSP emulation, using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, and with Tekken 6 here, we are at 2x resolution. So, pretty decent, not the hardest game to emulate, I really do consider this a mid-range game. So with easier to run stuff, we could go up to 3x, but of course there is one game we really need to test here, and that's going to be Chains of Olympus. This one did pretty decently with no frame skip, but it's definitely not perfect on this new tablet. I was really hoping that they got all of those stutters out of the way with this. You know, if they pushed a little more power to it, we could definitely do it. But we still get some stutters with no frame skip, even at 1x resolution, whether you're using the Vulcan backend or OpenGL. And the final emulator I tested was Dolphin. Still, really not enough power to consider buying one of these specifically for GameCube. Now, there are some easier to emulate games that run very, very close to full speed, like Time Splitters 2. And of course, you could always use a modded version of Dolphin to lower that resolution even more, but I use the stock version of Dolphin from the official website, and something like Automotalista just kind of really fell on its face. Okay, so I've had a few days to spend with the new 2023 Amazon Fire HD 10, and I do think it's a decent tablet for $80 if you know what you're getting into. This will also have lock screen ads. That's something that can also be disabled using third-party applications if you wanted to do that. 
They usually don't bug me that much. I know it's a way they use to kind of subsidize the price on these. But yeah, here's the deal. I mean, if you're looking for a secondary tablet or a tablet for the kids, you know they can play some Minecraft on it, watch YouTube, Netflix. They can play some of their favorite clicker games. And you know, if you really got down to it, you could install Google Play, install some higher-end games that'll run pretty good on this. Now, it, like I said, it's not going to run Genshin Impact, and it's really not going to emulate GameCube very well. But there's still a lot of stuff that can be done with this. And in my opinion, yeah, it is the best $80 tablet on the market when this is on sale. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.